I'm super excited to have you with us tonight. Before I jump on into the chat, I always like to just start things off by welcoming you guys and asking a little bit about you, where you're from, how old your kids are, how long you've been following NJ Mom, and if you're new here, we're so happy that you're with us today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, please come on in, tell us in the comments a little bit about yourself and how your week's been going so far, what's been going on, uh, how you're faring. It's been a little bit of a crazy week over here, but um, I'm sure many of you moms can relate. So um, please let us know uh, how you're feeling this week and what is on your mind. Um, throughout the chat tonight, we're going to be um, dropping links in the comments of things that we're talking about, and we'll be bringing in our special guests in a few minutes. Super great tonight, which we'll get to soon. Um, we always do just a couple of things off the bat. So if you're new here, um, come on in along for the ride. My name is Marissa. Uh, I am the host of NJ Mom TV. I host our weekly live chats here on Facebook and our YouTube channel. And um, I have three kiddos at home with me, hopefully sleeping up there. I hear a little stirring still, so fingers crossed. Uh, three kiddos under five at home here with me. So um, I'm right there in the thick of things. Um, and I'm excited to have you with us tonight. So welcome, if you're new, hi. Um, as always, we like to do this every week. We've been doing this every week um, since we started these chats. We like to give a shout out and a thank you to all of our frontline workers who are uh, on the front, line, front lines of this pandemic still after so many months now since March. Um, we started these back in the spring and we always just like to give um, just a moment of appreciation. You know, we have a lot of um, nurses and medical workers and first responders and all sorts of different frontline workers who join us week after week, um, several mamas who's spouses or partners are on the front lines and have been all this time. So a weekly moment of appreciation, we thank you and we really value all that you've been doing. Um, speaking of our healthcare heroes, um, really cool event we've been telling you about the past couple of weeks and if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, um, or if you're new to our chat tonight, wanna make sure you know about this. Um, happening this month through October 25th actually, is the Run to Honor Healthcare Heroes, RWJ Barnabas Health, and the New Jersey Devil. It's a virtual event this year, of course, but it's just such a fantastic cause, particularly with everything going on um, with coronavirus and COVID-19 and everything that um, health workers have been through. Um, basically, 100% of the proceeds of this event will go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Emergency Response Fund, and that is to help protect both healthcare workers and patients um, from COVID-19 and other emergencies. So definitely such an important cause right now, such a valuable cause. So great thing to support throughout the month of October. And you can actually use NJ Mom for 25% off of your registration. The 5K, I should mention. So um, easy to do virtually from now through October 25th. And we have a write-up on the site all about it. You want to check that out. Fun. Um, to do, and you can do it out, outside, outdoors, and just so. Um, wanted to let you know about that. Also, always love to just give a little rundown of some of the new articles on NJ Mom this week. So, if you're new here, you can kind of find out a little bit about us and what we're known for and what we do. Um, we have a series every week called NJ Mom Preneur of the Week. Really fun to see just all of the fantastic women around the state who. Um, are so inventive with their business ideas and so dedicated to making those dreams come to reality um, while also, of course, caring for their families. So if you're looking for a little inspiration, this is a great place to start on the site. Um, this week we had Rosa Triu. Uh, she's with Baguette Bistro. And I loved her story because she actually left her job of 20 years to jump into starting a restaurant with no restaurant experience and has done it successfully and just has such passion for what she does. So give it a click, give it a look. Um, if you're looking for maybe a little jump start to try something new, um, NJ Mop and North of the Week is for you. It's a great place to start. Um, we also, of course, are known for our guides, for things to do around New Jersey with your family. 
guys love those every time we um, share them, particularly like the seasonal ones. Um, everyone just goes crazy for them because it's just a great way to kind of see what's going on throughout the season and kind of pick and choose what you'd like to do. And fall, of course, there's so much. So fall things to do in New Jersey is up on the site. This is our NJ Mom fall bucket list. And um, we have a ton of great ideas. So if you're looking for something to do to kind of spirit, that's great. Pumpkin picking, apple picking, of course. Um, there's a generations old local New Jersey farm with hay pyramids and corn mazes. A lot of the farms do this. And of course, the foliage around the state. So um, definitely check that out if you are looking to plant some fall. We also um, each week do kid friendly things to do. Week 10. Um, so 10 kid friendly things to do this week is up. And this week we have some really cool ones. Uh, learn about creepy crawly insects, outdoor adventures at Van Vleck House and Gardens in Montclair and definitely on my list to get to. I still haven't been in it. So, um, you can also admire over 40 decorated pumpkins from your car window at the drive through pumpkin car that's happening in Titusville. Um, this looks super, that looks super cool. Uh, you can also sam sample some German foods and pick up some goodies at the craft show at Oktoberfest uh, in Demarest. And I love it. big pretzels and the just so, uh, yeah. So lots of fun things for this week. So definitely give those a look if you haven't already. I'm just gonna see if anyone is saying hi and telling us a little bit about how their week's going. If you haven't yet and you're just jumping on into the chat, just joining us, please come in, come in, come in. Stay well, check out our guest. She's gonna be amazing and we'll get to her in a second. And before I bring in our guest, um, wanted to just kind of get your wheels turning a little bit. If you're joining us, you see what our topic is tonight. It's meditation and ways to cope with stress and manage stress, both for mom and kids. We have a fantastic expert about this. So start thinking in your mind of some things that you maybe need a little assistance with. I have a long list myself. So I hope Tejal is prepared for that. Um, so yeah, think of some, some great questions for her and we're going to get started with her in just a moment. Um, in the meantime, we love to see all of your photos, uh, that you share with us here on Facebook and on Instagram. So thank you so much for sharing your pictures with us, um, using the hashtag NJ mom or tagging us at NJ mom here on Facebook in case you're new and just discovering this. Um, we actually, uh, choose five Facebook cover photos of the week. The feature. So um, all you have to do is comment a photo uh, of your NJ Mom adventures on our post, our cover photo, our cover photo post each week, and we choose five to. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, there have been amazing, great ones over the past couple of weeks, just with all of the fall activities. Great time of year for pictures. So um, maybe we will pick yours, and of course we will uh, drop the link for that if you're interested in uh, posting one here in the chat. Also. So don't forget to check. Okay, so I want to um, mention our guest tonight and just uh, give a little info before I bring her in. Um, Tejal is a mindfulness and meditation expert, author, and we just thought it would be so much fun to kind of bring her in and kind of give us mamas a little pause. You'll notice I have a candle going in the background. I'm like ready for some Zen time. Um, and we want to kind of tap into some of her strategies to use with our kids and our family. So again, um, think about what you might like to ask her um, as I wait for some of those comments to come in. I'm going to bring Tejal in with us so she can introduce herself. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, so happy to be here. We are so happy to have you. I absolutely love your background. You're <laughs> like, I mean, it's just perfectly on brand with like some um, not to say in our lives. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm in my shirt. Um, Yoga, eucalyptus, turmeric, meditation. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So Tejal, tell uh, all of our NGMO community a little bit about you and kind of what you do and what you're all about. Yeah, so I'm actually a former divorce attorney and I'm turned a mindful parenting coach. I'm a certified yoga meditation teacher for families. So I'm I can teach children as well as grown-ups. 
And I'm the author of the award-winning book, uh, Meditation for Kids, which just got released in April, right in the midst of the pandemic. Nice. Then, you know, there's kind of a silver lining that it was like right when we needed it, it kind of came out. So it's been- You a kind of planned that if you tried, no. by the way. No, Our, when we talked to my publisher, I was like, I mean, that was just like, of course we didn't want the, the pandemic to happen. Of course. of course. But it was a great resource. So many parents were- using it and calling upon it. And so it's been such a blessing that it came out at that time. And I'm also the host of a podcast called the Time and Talks podcast. And I, um, my son who's five years old will join me and we'll talk about all things mindfulness for kids and parents. And um, so we're, we're all about it. And uh, that's kind of what my life purpose is, is really making um, mindfulness and meditation very accessible for modern parents, but also translate it in a way that's easy for us to infuse it in our children's life too. Yeah, I think that that's um, just so great in so many ways. But, um, you know, in terms of you kind of coming in right when we needed it the most, I mean, I think probably the number one thing that I hear from every mom at the moment is, you know, we need ways to de-stress really the, the entire family. Um, and I'm sure you're hearing that as well from your clients. So I guess first, just um, maybe give us your high level top few tips that, you know, when a really stressed out mom or, or parent or, or family comes to you, what are some of the first things you tell them? Yeah. So the first very interesting thing is that many of us know when we're not feeling right, like when we feel off, um, but many of us don't realize that there's actually three different types of stress responses that we have. And then there's different breathing and yoga and meditations that actually reset your nervous system. So many of us just think that, oh, let's do the generic, let's take a deep breath and that's going to supposed to calm us down. And many of us have probably realized like, okay, sometimes it might calm you down. And sometimes you're like, well, that really didn't do anything. Right. And that, and let's, let's be real, right? Like you could have moments where you're just fuming and you're like, that deep breath did nothing. Did nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so what, what my, um, what my, passion and goal is, is that um, as a certified Ayurveda yoga specialist, I translate ancient yogic practices based on what stress that you're experiencing. And so I break it down in a very simple way. So the type of stress that you experience, the way that it, it physiologically uh, manifests in your body is different based on the emotion that you have. So for example, many of us feel anxious, right? We feel mm -hmm. anxious worried, overthinking, that is mental stress. And mental stress is a, it's too much energy floating or like, you know, swirling around. Like when I talk to kids, it's like howling hurricane winds. It's mm. like loud, it's, it's like noisy. It's like your mind is spinning. And we all know that sensation. I do a lot of stories and analogies and visualizations because I think it just makes it much easier to understand. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, Think of it like a howling hurricane wind. And when what we need to do essentially is move that energy down, ground it down, slow down. And so there's different breaths and different yoga postures that we could do. And you don't have to do like a yoga sequence. You can do one specific yoga posture that will help you move the energy down. And you'll notice that you don't have to think your way out of a problem. It's actually if you do a specific breath or hold your body in a specific way, the energy just naturally starts flowing down. So when I learned this, just personally in my life, I was like, wow, like we kind of have been, ex you know, going about stress like in, in an incomplete way, not the wrong way. It's just an incomplete right. way. And then, um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to talk about different tips, tips for each, but I want to go through each stress type and then I'll go through the different exercises. Okay. Right? Um, so then the second type of stress is emotional stress. And this is, the emotions of frustration, anger, annoyance. Think about like those cartoons when there's anger, it's like steam coming out of your ears mm -hmm. or like fire coming out of your head. Like physically your body is overheating. Right. And, right. Like when you're yeah. like, that, that feeling is different than when you're anxious because your mind is kind of swirling. It's like you're flighty and you're kind of like forgetful and kind of like in this realm. And then there is that anger. Like you're so like rooted in this heat. And so 
physiologically, like the first thing that we should be doing is cooling our body down. And the easiest way to do that is to drink water or to go into the bathroom and run cold water on your wrist points. Interesting. This will immediately start bringing the temperature down. And so you'll find that you'll be able to access your prefrontal cortex or your mind that's the more reasoning mind, right? Not the rage mind or the, the wow. fight flight. So that's one of the things that's really important of just kind of being in tune of like, okay, how's I'm feeling annoyed. I'm feeling frustrated. You're going to automatically, your body's going to overheat. So rather than think your way out of it, like go get a cold glass of water or go to the bathroom. I do a lot of resets in the bathroom when I'm frustrated and I'm like running cold water because it immediately starts cooling me down and then I can think more clearly. Um, and then the third type of stress that we experience is physical stress. And that's kind of rooted in our belly area. And think about like sadness or disappointment. Um, or being bored. It's very like unmotivated. You're kind of sluggish. You're like mm -hmm. low moving. Um, and so that means that there's too much energy, like sedentary energy. And you have to move energy up in your body in order to feel invigorated and radiant and to feel motivated and, it, and not that sluggish mind. And so for any time, like when you're feeling physical stress, like moving your hands, uh, like putting your hands above your body and shaking it out or doing jumping jacks, like literally putting your hands above your head, oh, yeah. starts moving energy up. And so, and, and then I forgot the anxiety one. So with anxiety, the most, the best thing that you could do when you're feeling anxious to slow down is doing a deep breath where you inhale through your nose and you're exhaling out of your mouth with the exhale being longer than the inhale. Mm -hmm. And when you that it's like it's not like a lot of people when they do the exhale it's like they have a candle and they're trying to blow the candle out it's not that powerful it's actually like imagine that there's a candle and there's a flame and you just want it the flame to wiggle so it's a slow like seeping okay. breath out and that's the cue that's going to reset your rest and digest or your relaxed um nervous system to then be like to to access your rational logical like mind in this in a clear state of mind um wow okay so that was a lot and I know, like i, I mean like the game changing i mean i don't think i ever really heard of it like broken down that way in terms of like the physio lot like what is happening in your body and what the remedy should be for it um i i, I always tell my kids Okay, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. And, and I tell myself that because, you know, as, as a mom and, and as a human, I, I, I get frustrated all the time. I need that. And I, sometimes when I do yell or when I do lose my temper, you know, I, the first thought for us moms is always, you know, the, the guilt side of it is like, oh, I'm trying to teach my kids to be patient. How are they going to learn if I can't, you know, reset myself? So you just gave us like, three amazing mm -hmm. little tricks to kind of do on our own um, in those, in those moments. Now, do you do the same, like, would you recommend the same type of responses for kids then, or how do you approach it with kids? Yeah. So in my book, this check-in is called yummy yucky. And the way that mm -hmm. we do it is that, um, you know, you're rubbing the palms of your hands together and we're going to see, mm -hmm. When you're not feeling well, it means that one of your engines is not working, either your head engine, your heart engine, or your belly engine. And so we're rubbing our hands together, placing our hands on our head and seeing, does it feel yucky like a howling hurricane? Or does it feel calm like a summer starry night? So you're getting like, does it feel loud or does it feel quiet? Right. And then you place your hands on your heart and say, does it feel like hot lava rocks on your chest? Or does it feel cool like a strawberry smoothie? So you're creating this, like that Im imagery for them. Like, does it my body feel hot or does it feel cool? And you'll know this because like I just told you the emotions, once you're aware of it, you'll be able to tune into your child. Like, okay, they're feeling nervous or they're feeling anxious. So this is a head thing or they're feeling frustrated or annoyed. This is a, a emotional thing. Mm -hmm. Or they're feeling disappointed or they're feeling sad. Now that's a physical stress thing. Yeah. And so it, it's, I create that language because it's really easy for parents. I, I use that even though I know like, okay, the different like scientific way of it. I like to be like, okay, I'm feeling anxious. I got to do a windy windmill breath. And that's like, I, and with the breath that I showed you, that's like what we do with kids, but they're moving their fingers while they're doing that inhale in and exhale out. So everything is 
translated, like I said, it's the real tools that grownups need, but it's just made playful for kids. And I do that because I want them to learn the right tools and then right. I'll grow with them, right? Like they could drop the the kiddiness if they want to, or it's going to be like a lot of my clients who are now, or little my students, not my clients, who were, I had them when they were like four or five years old, who are now like nine or 10. They still tell me, they're like, Miss Angel, I still do sipping strawberry smoothie breath. Like that's what's ingrained in them, even though they're right. nine and 10 years old. That's just part of their language, kind of like me. I mean, I just, those are the words that I use to know what breath I should do, or what yoga posture I should do. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes it catchy and yeah. it definitely sticks with you too, in a way that it probably wouldn't if it didn't have that sort of more lighthearted name rather than saying, okay, now we're going to meditate. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it kind of takes that sort of intimidating part off. And I, yeah. I, I kind of want to speak to that because I feel like this is something that I have struggled with. And I don't know, moms, tell me if this is something you have too. Sometimes I think about meditation and I think like, oh, well, it has to be a whole thing. I have to set mm -hmm. aside time. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you can kind of get in your head, even though I know it's really good for me, as does everyone, throughout the course of our day and all of the things we have to do as, as mothers and as people, um, you can kind of like talk yourself out of it mm -hmm. because you can kind of look at it as a little intimidating or maybe you've never tried it before and it is intimidating to you. So speak a little bit about that and kind of break that barrier down for us a little bit. Yeah. I think there's two, that's a true prong thing. So when we're so, we have so much on our plate, we, this is like across the board, we know this. So it, seems kind of like when you think of meditation, it seems like a lot of nothingness. And when you have a lot of some things to do, it seems like those things come into priority yes. than the nothingness, right? Like that's the kind of imagery that we have of, oh my gosh, like how can that be productive when I have to do X, Y, and Z? And I kind of want to break that down a little bit because it, it's one of those things where Unless you've given it a try, you realize that it's like one of those things that, you know, you want to be efficient, but this kind of like helps you be more efficient because it's training mm -hmm. your brain to focus on one thing at a time. One of the biggest things I think like is like misleading as mainstream meditation has made it is that when you think of meditation, the image that comes to most people's mind is that you're sitting still, your eyes are closed, you're kind of like in a Zen state that you're taking deep breaths in and out and your mind is supposed to be silent and quiet. And you're just supposed to have this like effervescent, like peaceful experience. And so for, for some, you're like, okay, well, I sat and I tried it. And that was not pleasant. That was not like that image of like what we think yes. it's going to be. And the reason is, is that, and this is from my own personal experience, because when I entered doing meditation 10 years ago, I did that too. I went to a mindful meditation class. I tried it out because that's what I thought meditation was. And it was hard AF. Like I was like, this is like, like what? <laughs> not for me. <laughs> yeah. Opening my eyes. And I was like, I don't think I'm good at this. Right. And what I realized over a period of time, and I went to like different different teachers, had different ways of teaching, and I I brought that up, and he, and one of my teachers was like, you know, um, try guided meditation, try a different type of meditation because what and this is how I equate it. He's like passive meditation, like what we're thinking of, is like the CrossFit of meditation. It's like oh. When yeah, it's it's like you would never tell someone who's never worked out, be like, hey, go into a CrossFit class and then like figure it right. out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because we know what's going to happen. They're either going to fall flat on their face. They're right. going to give up or they're going to throw up. One, <laughs> one of the, None of which are good. So. Right? Um, so it's the same idea. And like when I started doing meditation, I realized is that it's much, we can't imagine, like we can't expect our brain to learn how to focus on nothing when we haven't trained it to focus on one thing at a time. And so the types of meditations that I learned that when you're building the practice, whether you're a child or a beginner as a grown up, you we want to try active meditations where there's movement. And that's another thing that people don't realize. Right. Meditation does not always have to be still. It actually, you can link like movement and there's as a Kundalini teacher, like mostly most of our meditations had some physical movement with it. So you're linking breath 
with movement. So that gives your mind an anchor to be able to fo- like it's engaged in something. So yeah. it's not like going off in like la la land, you know, like in- right. until you're actually have enough practice because I can certainly now there's certain days that yes my mind will go like it will go like more quieter and then some days I just have a lot going on and it's not it's just a practice and it's not um and I think that's a big thing like guided meditation again you're listening to someone recite you're using active listening so your mind is engaged so you're training your brain to focus on one thing rather than like I said nothing not rather than just focusing yeah. on the breath because your mind untrained mind it is so easy to just get carried away by the thought and right. so that's one of the biggest things like I'm um, using an affirmation or even a mantra because that's mm-hmm. re- you're bringing your mind back to an affirmation back bringing it back and so it's I like to say it like this so many of us think that like you know many of us our minds are kind of like if you equate cars with like thoughts it's like Friday night you know, Friday night traffic on like an LA freeway, like our mind is usually like speeding like that, right? That's usually what our sensation is. And many of us think that, okay, meditation is like, okay, we got to shut, like we got to turn off, we got to stop those cars and it needs to be silent. There needs to be like, you know, no cars on the road. And actually I want us to like visualize, it's not that you're not going to have any thoughts because your mind is designed, it's a tool that's designed to think. It's training your mind to slow down those thoughts, to create the experience of having, um, think about 2 a.m. traffic on a Tuesday night. 2 a.m. <coughs> I'm getting over it. Oh. Um, that is a great analogy because there's, that's a huge difference. Yeah, because there's still cars on the road. It's just that there's space between the cars. So there's space between your thoughts. And that's the sensation that we're creating. It's like, don't don't think that like all the thoughts are going to go away and that like you know and i think that whenever i teach my clients like let's do active meditation they're so surprised that they're like wow i can actually do this do this right yeah. so that's so that's so interesting um as someone who's sort of like tried it and had that same exact experience you uh described and i have done a couple of ones but Maybe I just haven't found the right one, um, mm-hmm. which is another thing. I want to get to Stacy's question here because this, I, I think, it is sort of what you're speaking about. Um, any other recommendations for resources like books, music, guided meditation for young children? My girls are three and four mm-hmm. and need multi-sensory tools to practice mindfulness, meditation, and yoga practices. So yeah. what are some of your, your tips on that? Yeah, so there's something called a Hoberman sphere. And it's like this ball that like kind of expands out. I've seen that. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And that is by far, when you're teaching young children, that's the perfect visualization for them to understand deep breath in, deep breath out. So I think that's like a must have for mm-hmm. any family that's like teaching mindfulness. Um, the other, if they like like sounds, um, there's a soundtrack. Like I get it. I listen to on Spotify, but I'm sure you can buy this on Apple um, or iTunes. Sade, S-A-D-A. They have... Mm-hmm. Have really short kids nighttime meditations like literally like two to three minutes not very long but they're very engaging they're short so if you find that your child likes the guided meditations not every child's different so if they like the guided meditations at night this is predominantly more like nighttime meditation that is really great um, music wise Kira Willie, she has mindful moments um, so I love doing these she has one minute little mindful moment clips so they're like three or three to five deep breaths, but she makes it very playful. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, hot chocolate bread. Or, right. you know, I love doing those like in the car, um, like on the go, like, you know, I have that playing. It's very playful. I'll tell you a secret. So I started doing this with my son, like when he, my older son, when he was two and people were like, how do you like, how do you start practicing like the deep breathing? I was like, I do it in the car because he can't go anywhere. So I have the soundtrack on and we're doing the deep yeah. breath and he was like, picking it up and it's very engaging. And so, um, that's, they can't go anywhere. So they're like, they're sitting still and they're going to listen to it. And it's, like I said, it's very kid friendly. It's not boring or anything. Um, So Kira Willie, Mindful Moments, Sade for like nighttime. um, And then the the Huberman Sphere, I think is really great. And then, you know, there's tons of cards and stuff. I think like for ages three and four, they tend to lose their 
I think, at least I feel like sometimes they can lose their attention. Yeah, that's how old my kids are too. Our kids are the same age. Um, my boys are three and I would love, and I've done like some, like like the Cosmic Kids Yoga and, yeah. some, and, and they, they have to be like in the right mood. Sometimes they'll like do the entire thing and then other times it's on for like a minute and then they're, you know, they're off doing something else, which yeah. is fine. I just want to like introduce them to it. So that's sort of reassuring to hear you say that. Cause I'm like, oh, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm not doing it right. Like, like the meditation, no. you know? So, um, but I think that that was a great tip about the car too. I never thought of like putting that on to listen to in the car because it's sort of, I mean, they have no choice. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a choice, exactly. Um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, the way that I introduce it to kids or I teach my, you know, and whether I was going into classrooms or teaching parents is that you want to equate it like, and I, you know, I teach it like I can't sing, but I do sing this for kids. I'll sing all the time. But it's kind yeah. of like I created this little song and it's like, you know, you teach kids that you brush your teeth to keep sugar buggies away and you teach them that you wash your body to keep the germs away. And you can teach them that you brush your brain every day by meditating and taking deep breaths to keep yucky thoughts and feelings away. And so mm -hmm. it's, for me, I look at it like this, like there's two aspects of what we're trying to introduce why we're trying to introduce this one is that we're trying to instill in our children at a very young age that your mental health is equally as important as your physical health right. so just like we're teaching them like i said like for parents i'm like do not be concerned how long they're sitting do not be right. concerned like how still they were the idea is is that if they do it and they even do three breaths, you celebrate it because we're creating a habit that's getting planted into their subconscious. So for me, I, I always tell parents, I'm like, get out of that, like, you know, that outcome aspect of our mind, yeah. grown ups that we have. This is about like what we know science tells us between the ages of zero and eight, everything that a child hears, experiences, uh, sees becomes part of their subconscious. So my goal is, is that, and that's why I really focus on children that are younger in age is because I think it really benefits us that if we are consistently, just like anything else, planting the seeds, planting the seeds. Like my son who's five is like now, it's like habit to him. He has breakfast, sits down and goes into our yoga room and he does like a meditation. And some days it's a minute, some days it's three breaths, but that's okay. Cause it's like, he did it and he knows like, that's just now like part of like the, the routine. And so that's what I want parents to take, especially take away from this is that Three breaths is not like, oh my gosh, they could only sit for three breaths. No, three breaths is great because amazing. right. Yes, this is great. Like, and you celebrate it and you're like, that was amazing. How do you feel? Like, and you know, like you you keep like reiterating that. Um right. the second purpose of it that many parents, you know, like this comes to their forefront is that, you know, I want to help them ride through big feelings and help mm -hmm. them ride through meltdowns and, you know, help them cope with emotions. And so I like to think of it and I like to explain it like this. So, you know, like you would never tell your kids that, you know, starting from today, you only have to brush your teeth when you have chocolate. When you don't have chocolate, you don't have to brush your teeth, right? And like every parent would be like, of course, we would never say that. And so that's kind of like what meditation is. It's like you're non-negotiable. We're going to consistently, like we're going to brush your teeth. We're going to brush your brain every single day. Doesn't matter if you have big feelings visit or not. We're just going to keep planting that little seed. And then the second aspect of it is that, you know, what happens when someone gets a cavity, right? It's like, that's kind of like your meltdowns. Like mm -hmm. no one would tell you just go brush your teeth and the meltdown will go away. So it's not like we're telling our kids just take a deep breath or just meditate and your big feeling yeah. is going to go away. It's you have to go to a skilled dentist who has a different set of tools and a different skill set who's going to help you ride through and find relief from that meltdown. And mm -hmm. so I like to visualize like when our child is having a meltdown or having a tough moment, we are the dentist. So we now have to have a little bit different like skill set of how we're going to approach it. And I break it down into three moments. So you have to have the connection moment, then you have a mindful moment, and then you can have a teachable moment. And so connection moment is not about telling them to take deep breaths or telling them like this is like when they're in red brain, completely dysregulated, cannot even hear you. That's not the time to to tell them to take a deep breath. It's mm -hmm. actually like either stay silent 
or you touch them, right? Like if they like to, to be touched, you're like actually squeezing them. So either you're staying silent and you're like, you're safe. And the other thing is like, you're doing the deep breathing. So if they like your touch, like if they like to be held, you regulate your breath and touch them and that will start regulating them. And that actually I learned from my own experience when I was going through my labor and um, my midwife, like I was getting to a point, like my breath was getting dysregulated and she was like, just take a slow deep breath. And I just couldn't get there. And so she grabbed my hand and she like was rubbing my hand, rubbing my back, back and forth. And she was taking the deep breaths and I could feel myself regulating because she was regulated. So that is really, Really important like you have to find a way for your child to release the intensity of the energy of that emotion from their body and you'll notice then they start what I like to say get into yellow brain they're starting to like they're not completely fine they're not like completely green brain where they're playful and happy but they can actually kind of hear you a little bit so it's like the the complete meltdown red brain they are not like there and then they start like once they kind of ride out of the emotion there's gonna be a place where they're starting to like talk or they're trying to like they're able to be receptive to what you say that's when you invite them like would you like to take a deep breath in i see that like, anger was visiting you those are the kind of languages or like i see that you know you were feeling disappointed or you're um and that's like when you can invite them like you know would you want to take a deep breath do you, what could help you what can i do to help you feel better or calm down and so that's a one big big different difference that like many parents want to go right in from the beginning and be like just take a deep breath, just take a deep breath, but they're not, <laughs> a lot of times it like triggers them more. They're like freaking out more. They're like, you're talking too much. And yeah. So that's really important to, to distinguish um, of like, what's the purpose of why we're doing this and how we introduce it to them. It's like you were in my house about like five hours ago <laughs> because I feel, you know, my, you know, my three-year-old is struggling with some really um, big meltdowns. Mm -hmm. in the where, and, and he's different than my older son and the fact that he doesn't really like when I, when even I do my deep breaths, he'll tell me, mm -hmm. stop taking deep breaths in like <laughs> the midst of him crying and getting upset because I think he knows, because I have said, take a deep breath, you know? So um, that was some very actionable advice as to kind of how to handle it differently in the moment of things. Um, and kind of just not talk and like just kind of let it be and kind of give it a minute. Um, mm -hmm. If they don't want to be touched at all and if mm -hmm. they just like keep going, yeah. just stay silent and deep breathe on our own and kind of work through it that way. Yeah. So what I do is that, um, cause my son, he's not typically the one who, my older son doesn't typically like to be touched. And right. so like, you know, um, I see that you're having a big feeling when you're ready for mommy to help you, I'm going to be right in the kitchen. And then I okay. walk away because right. so you, you're not creating that space where they're, you're just walking away and they don't know where you're going. It's like, you know, when you're ready, I'm right there, but I see that you need some space. And so that actually is more beneficial. And a lot of times I'll find that like, he'll like be crying and then he'll be like, find his way towards me or like follow me. And then yes. like, you, you know, I was like, do you need a hug? Like, you know, can I help right. you? Or, you know, I, sometimes I will now, what I don't even say, like, can I give you a hug? I'll actually just put my arms out and try mm -hmm. to like use nonverbal gestures as much as possible. Um, and that seems to work. Of course, every meltdown is a little bit different. And I feel like you're like MacGyver, like you're trying to like <laughs> navigate it. Like there's no like one strategy that works every time. But I feel like those, like those are like the squeezing or the space or like the taking deep breaths on a given day. Like those are the ones like that I've found that will work. And mm -hmm. they're just different different tools that you have now yeah. that like, when this pops up, like you won't feel flustered because you're like, okay, these are the different things. And like I said, there are many times that like, if I notice that I'm feeling like aggravated and triggered from this, when I say I'm taking some space, like I'm going to go in the bathroom real fast. And that's when I do my, like I put like water, even yeah. like, water, like back here, I'll cool myself down before, um, you know, I go back out and I find like that keeps me more centered and just kind of like brings me back to the present rather than getting wrapped up in my own emotions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love all that. All such great advice. Now, let me ask you this for someone who 
is just wanting to start out meditation with their kids, yeah. and maybe themselves and their kids. So you told us sort of the adult version of that was, you know, find a guided one. But if we wanted to start out small, like you mentioned with our kids and, and really create this habit for them, how would you suggest getting started? Just, you know, day one, we want to yes. do it tomorrow. Um, so honestly, that's why I wrote the book because I wanted it to be a guide. It was nothing like that was out there. Like I was a teacher. Yes. And I was educating, you know, teachers and I was teaching parents through my coaching, but I recognized over 10 years, there's a systematic way of teaching it kind of like the ABCs. There's a foundation of where to start and how to build it. And so that's why I wrote the book, because like I said, I'm translating like the, the actual scientific technology of how to reset your nervous system, but making it in a way that's not daunting for parents and not daunting for kids. And so the easiest way, honestly, like I break it up, like the way that I have the book, I break it up based on the different emotions and the different stresses that you have, like the stress type. So if they're feeling like lack of focus, distracted, anxious, there's a chapter for that. If they're feeling angry, frustrated, um, you know, there's a chapter for that. And there's like, you know, like I said, sadness, disappointment. And then when they need to like calm their mind down to relax, to go to bed, there's a chapter for that. So I really broke it into um, not just meditations. Like I look at it in three ways. It's like the breathing exercise. Then there's the yoga posture, like the single yoga posture that you could do. Like if you're feeling anxious because kids are different, right? Like sometimes they might be want to, they, sometimes they might want to sit. Sometimes they need a movement to kind of mm -hmm. move the energy out. And we're actually the same exact way. Like I, I, wouldn't say that you sit like my meditation practice changes day to day because it's based on the energy that I feel um, based on that day, like how I yeah. feel. So that's kind of how I designed it. Um, and so I know just it's like the book is really kind of like the starting point because I make it like zip up and sit up. That's like the, the primer of like teaching kids. Like imagine it's a fall day outside and you have to put on your jacket before you go out to play. Let's zip it up and sit up nice and tall. And like, you know, it's a sunny day out. So let's get our sunglasses and then let's rest them on our knees. So it's yeah. really, really playful. And like I said, that's exactly where parents should be starting. And it's like, we haven't been taught this. So we're kind of right. like that skill ourselves. Um, so yeah, that's really, I would say, like, if you follow the book, you'll, you'll know exactly. And you'll be like, wow, I'm a meditator. And I didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. So parents can start with their kids yeah. with the book, you yeah. know, throughout that. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, Lexi wants to know uh, on the tantrum thing. She, she mentioned as we were talking about this, my oldest son does the same thing. I try to calm them down. What else can I do? Um, Lexi, I think she, uh, Tejal just spoke to that, but if that didn't answer your question, maybe let us know something a little more specific so she can, um, kind of jump back in with that. Yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, you use the phrase on your Instagram and, and you know, in, in speaking a lot about your kids and, and tantrums and things, you use the phrase time in mm -hmm. the name of your podcast. So what does that mean exactly? So I take it that it's the opposite of a timeout, but what does that mean in terms of mindfulness and meditation? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's similar idea. It's just a different approach to it. So when you think of time out, you're recognizing that a child is overstimulated. There's something happened that they need some time away to kind of, you know, re like Agreed. recalibrate right. and to come back to center. But a lot of times with science and what a lot of uh, pediatricians and parenting experts are finding is that long term, it's really we want to raise children who are have self-control, impulse control, but also understand like, OK, I made a mistake. How do I learn from this? And so. Mm -hmm. It's not really in the long term. Yes, maybe there's short term compliance because it's stopping the behavior, but it's not really teaching children. How do I ride through emotions? What do I do when this emotion happens and how do I how does it feel in my body? How do I express it? And so that's what we really want to raise children, right, is like emotionally intelligent children who can handle pressures and challenges and yeah. sadness and disapp disappointment and how do they ride through those emotions because it's such a crucial life skill and so time ends is still the same recognition that okay a child is having a tough moment but instead of going like on a naughty step or sitting on a chair or fate like you know as as a way of like you know go to your room right, yeah. right. Um, it's like you're creating in this inviting space and like we have a little corner it's not like you need a big space 
but it's a little calm down corner. And you create this with your child when they're in a, when they're not having a meltdown, but you're like, this is going to be your safe place that when every big feelings visit, that this is where we're going to go. And there's, we're going to put different things in there to help you calm down. So like I said, like that Hobermeer's, Hobermeer's, mm, I love this. Or like calming, like calming jars. So like even batons, like if you see batons, right? Like putting it up one way, taking a deep breath in and deep breath out. Um, so like the different books, like for younger children, like um, Little Monkey Calms Down or Calm Down Time or the meditation. Like you could have a few different books. You could have even my, bro- my, my brother, my son likes Buddha boards. So like a lot of times, like the whole act of like dipping in water and drawing or even color. Right. So you engage with your child. Like what, when you have a big feeling, like what would help you calm down? And actually um, there's a company called Generation Mindful that has a great time and toolkit. So they have like the different posters of like the different feelings, different calm down strategies. They actually even have it like in different like placemats where they can like put like, okay, I'm feeling like this. This is what I'm going to do to calm down. And then they, after they do it, they're going to check in. Do I feel better? Yes, no, a little. And then they can kind of work through it. So the whole idea is that, yes, like, like I said, when they're crying in that red brain moment, this is not when they're like going into their calm down corner. This is like when they're like the initial like impulse Before, of that energy right. yeah. gone out. and like okay let's let's now like let's work through let's ride out that emotion that's there mm-hmm. um, and so that's the whole approach of it it's like when you're creating that sort of safe environment for them to be like it's safe for you to feel like this it's okay um you know even mommy and daddy feels like this like you know yeah. And being very honest, like mommy needs to take a time in because I'm feeling really overwhelmed or, you know, my head engine is really spinning very fast. Um, you know, it's just like constantly creating that open communication. But then the really other big thing is that a lot of times, and I made this mistake, I'm sharing this because also it's like when your child, whether if there's like a misbehavior or something that they did, many of us will try to rectify or like talk about it right away. Like, okay, after they right. come you know that this is wrong or this is not. And what I found is um, that many times, like when I created space from the teachable moments, like I noticed that I started to have the teachable moment at night and be like, hey, but do you remember when this happened last, yeah. like when this happened? And you're creating the conversation then when you've had time to be removed. To decompress a little, yeah. right. And like you're not charged by it and they're not on edge by it and I noticed and even in the book I have conversations where you're let's start again or retrace your day or you know climbing mistake mountain the whole idea is to reframe mistakes in a really positive way but also Mm -hmm. there's like exercises in the book it's like how to to role play it and how to press your reset button and be like okay let's start again and tomorrow's a new day and what could I do differently so it's It's that whole component of like, yes, you're riding through the feelings, but then you wait till your child is in a receptive green brain. Like children can learn only when they're in that state of mind, when then that playful, like like their, their essence, not right after a meltdown. So Mm -hmm. that's that's the other aspect of it is like the calm down corner is really just like your safe place to calm yourself down. And then you have the teachable moment, you know, at a different time when they're completely like there to to listen. I love that. Um, so Lexi got back and, and kind of gave an example. She said, for example, when my oldest son has my laptop and is playing a game and my youngest son starts a meltdown and then my oldest son does the same, what should I do to stop it? So Lexi, I think you mean like if they kind of are feeding off of each other in that moment. Um, any tips Any tips for that? Tasel? So I guess it depends on what age they are because I know a lot of this is like developmental. So right. I guess I'm just like, if I do this generally, I would say that one of the biggest things is that like intensity, like when I said like connection moment, it's like, oh, like I love this. Um, I read this book called, um, what is it? Now Say This. I highly recommend it. But in Now Say This, they say like, when something like that happens, it's like you're con- you're like the sportscaster. Like mm-hmm. you are just recognizing like, oh, I see that you are so disappointed. And like in the book, I say that you visit different emotion islands. So for me, my language is, oh, I see that you're really like you're visiting anger island when your brother took that. 
And I said, mm-hmm. you know, I really try to make it very neutral and like, that's okay to feel angry. You know, like if you need some space, like that's fine. And I know in the heat of the moment, it might feel like, okay, I want them to calm down and figure it out. But I try to as much, even with my boys who are two and five, I try to stay out of it as much as possible. Like, Ooh, that was a really tough thing. I want to see, like, I, I'm really interested to see how you might work through that together. And a lot of yeah. times, like, you know, my, I, of course my five-year-old, my two-year-old doesn't understand that. And a lot of times my five-year-old's like, he took that from me or I want that. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's a really tough situation. I can understand that's frustrating you, but I trust that you can find a way to find a solution. And if you need help, I'm here for you. And you know, and that sometimes that frustrates him like, mommy, that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. you know, it, it's like, it's going to get into that. But I remember I'm like, do not, this is, it's funny. I say, do not negotiate with the terrorist. Right. <laughs> like, do not get pulled into it because that's what they want. And I'm like, I know that's so hard. And I say, like, and then a lot of times I will say like, if it's triggering me, it's like, you know, I will take that space and be like, um, you know, I'll be like, you know, I think I need a little bit of space right now. I'm going to be right back. And then, you know, I just have to get myself back together. And then, you know, if it's something not, if it's like something like that, if they can't share and be like, you know, that well, our rule is like, if we, if we can't share, it's going to go away for a little bit until we can share. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no, like I said, there's no right answer like that's going to work across the board but i like i I try to be as neutral as possible um in those situations Mm -hmm. and see if they'll you know see if they'll play out and just validate their feelings as much as i can Um, and and what about like in a situation like that i'm just thinking about my own boys um and lexi two boys also what about when it gets to hurting so that's a little harder for mom to sort of stay out of. No, that's um, a different, yeah. So what what do you recommend for that? Because that, you know, the that is what triggers me is the, you know, fighting. Um, because it's very hard with multiple kids to kind of tend to everybody at once while all grain like the feelings and the, you know, the grounding aspect of it for our kids. Yeah. It's, it's a tough balance to strike. Yes. And I think like for, for especially like hitting or, you know, those are firm boundaries. Those are not like, there is like that, like when I talk about connection, teachable, like, you know, the, the mindful that is like comes before anything. Like we have to make sure that all kids are safe, hands are to themselves um, before anything else, you know, anything else is done. Um, But you're right. It's, it's challenging when you have multiple children where they have different needs and you're not going to get it. And, I mean, you're not going to get it right all the time, right? In the sense that like one child is like having a meltdown and the other child is like, tr- like upset or frustrated or annoyed. Mm-hmm. And the best way that like, I, I try to as best as possible. And, you know, my five-year-old can understand, my older one can understand a little bit more than my two-year-old. And, um, you know, I kind of use the same language. It's like, you know, I see that you're angry. I see that you're frustrated, but there's only one mommy and I'm trying my mm, best. Right. I, I say that too. Yeah. yeah. It's like there's only, you know, one mommy. And I was like, I promise, like, it's, you know, I, I care about you. I want to help you, but you have to be, you know, I always say like to my son, like you have to be my teammate and just like, give me a moment you know mm-hmm. and like so it's like I it's it's always really difficult um in that scenario but like but I just try to communicate as much I really am very very honest with my kids about and I think it's important to be honest with your kids like mommy's feeling a little frustrated mommy's feeling yeah. a little frustrated I, mommy doesn't really know what she's doing like I am so vocal and verbal and honest and when I mess up I profusely apologize. Like, you know, I'm so sorry. Like, um, you know, next time this is what I'm going to do differently and like come right. up with a game plan. And I think that's all like, this is not like, um, we're not going to perfect it by any means, but I think mm-hmm. we show up trying our best to validate our kids and set our own boundaries. Like we're trying and we're doing our best. I think our children are going to, are going to feel that right. Like we're, they're going to know that. Um, yeah. And, Emotions, right? At that age, this is such a natural part of their emotion, like their brain development. You know, right. there's no to mention right that. now. There's, you know, so much happening in the exterior yes. world and school and friends, and they're not. You know, there's so much happening that is even playing into it further. So I think that mm-hmm. that's important, important to mind too. I want to be mindful of your time. Before we wrap, I just want to make sure that anyone um, who'd like to ask a question, please do for Tajel. Um, before we wrap this up, 
Um, but one last thing I did just want to mention too on my own or, or ask you on my own for, for moms who have kids who are a little bit older. Um, I know you talked about the book and some of your students still coming back to, mm -hmm. to what you taught them when they were younger, but do you have any recommendations for kids who are maybe a little older for moms who want to start there, um, kind of introducing meditation or mind? Yeah. So there are two books that I recommend. So um, Malika Chopra, like the Chopra's daughter, um, has two books for like that next phase up. So my book is for kids between the ages of four and eight. And then hers is like that early, like tween and teen age. She mm -hmm. has two books called Just Feel and Just Breathe. Great primers for that age group. And they have um, scenarios that they go through. Oh, nice. um, so it's very age appropriate for that. And then I found also, so my niece is kind of now in that age range, and I found that she said that she likes the apps. So, so for some kids, it's like, you know, and they have so much available for tweens and teens. I think that's right. an excellent place to start. But those two books are fantastic. I highly recommend them. And um, a lot of my clients whose kids are, are in that range have really responded well to them. Awesome. Okay. This has been an absolute wealth of information. I can't thank you enough. And I know that all of the moms watching this really will just have some actionable steps to take and some things to add into our toolboxes that are so valuable, whether we're starting out or just trying to navigate this time, um, being at home with our kids so much more and kind of just remembering these things. So thank you so much, Tejal. This was fantastic. You're so welcome. Thank you. Do you, you want to leave, uh, I almost forgot. Do you want to leave us with like a little sort of guided breath real quick before yeah. we end the night and, and just kind of leave us on that note? Yeah, sure. So one okay. of the things that, especially right now, when we feel frantic or like we feel that, and we're feeling it, right. we're feeling the anxiety from our family, but we're also feeling the outside anxiety, what's yes. what going on in the world. And so I think one of the things that we have to remember is that um, connecting with ourselves to remind ourselves that we're safe, because so often our mind, it hears the news or it hears, you know, all these different things coming to us. And the first instinct that we have is that we're not safe. Like it doesn't feel safe in the world, it doesn't feel safe in our body. And so I want to share this really quick, and it doesn't even take very long, you can do it like one to two minutes, like you'll feel the experience. But um, we're going to do that breath that I was telling you about that slowing yeah. down the breath, like inhaling in through your nose, exhaling through the mouth. But what okay. I want you to do with your hands. Um, so wherever you are, like just, uh, come to a seated position with your spine upright. Like I said, zip up your spine and I want you to rub the palms of your hands together. It's okay. You can keep your eyes open while you watch me do this. And then we're going to close our eyes. So rub your palms until you kind of feel a heat, like you feel a friction. And once you feel that friction, what I want you to do is I want you to place your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly. And I want you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to take a deep inhale in through your nose and slowly blow that breath out of your mouth ever so slightly. Just seep it out of your mouth. Again, take another deep breath in, feel your belly rise. And as you exhale, feel your chest go down and your belly go down. So another deep breath in through your nose. Blowing out of your mouth with the exhale being longer than the inhale, slow it down even more. This time when you inhale, I want you to mentally say in your mind, I am, as you inhale, and as you exhale, say safe. Inhale, I am, and exhale, safe. One more time, inhale in through your nose, I am. And exhale safe. Before you close your eyes, just take a moment to truly feel the palms of your hands on your heart and your belly supporting you. And just know that in this moment you are safe. Where you're sitting, in your home. 
just remind yourself, I am safe. When you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. That was amazing. Oh my gosh, I have like chills. It's that feeling that you hope to get from mm -hmm. meditation. Yeah, and it doesn't take very long. It just, right. you know. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Tejal. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. I know we're gonna get lots of moms uh, appreciating that. Uh, that way to sort of end this and end our night after a frantic day and, you know, the craziness that we're all in right now. So thank you so much. This You're was welcome. fantastic. Thank so you. So happy you, you could join us. Yes. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh, good. Nicole, you loved it. Like, I, that was awesome. Um, Tasia was fantastic. I hope you guys got a lot out of that. I think, um, I know I did. I, I really thought she just offered so many great tips and just a place to start. If you're looking to kind of introduce this into your family, um, we now have all the tools to do that. So um, thank you guys so much for being with us tonight. As always, we love to hear um, suggestions for topics and guests, anything that you guys want to hear us talk about or do or share um or kind of just dive into together and discuss please let us know you can drop us a comment send us a message let us know anytime if you have any suggestions for guests for next week or in upcoming weeks um please keep that in mind as well all right have a great night mamas hope your rest of the week feels as good as we're ending things tonight i know i feel very at peace so all right have a good night